Hello again, friends. Welcome back to my channel, Made by BJX. I'm so excited to share my first design of 2024. I really needed help naming this design, and you guys came through on my Instagram with tons of great suggestions. So with that being said, I picked out four of my favorite names that y'all suggested and made a poll on my story, and over 1,300 of y'all voted. So thanks to you guys, this design will be called Lilith, and I think it is so perfect and fitting for the style. It's definitely giving, like, romantic vampire or, like, romantic forest fairy witch vibes, so I love it. Here's a quick look at all the materials you'll need to make this project. I'd like to mention that you will need five stitch markers and I intentionally have three in one color and two in another. So if you have the ability to do that, then do so because it will be visually helpful for us later. And also here's a quick look at the yarn details that you guys usually ask for in the comments. <laughs> Before we begin, you'll need to get two measurements, your underbust measurement, mine is coming out to about 30 inches, and then the widest bust measurement, so wrap it around your back and make sure everything's even, and mine looks like it's about 35 inches, so grab those two measurements before we get started. I'd like to preface that we're going to make a double crochet foundation chain instead of using regular chains just because it has way more elasticity and we'll be using this to wrap around our underbust area. So we want this to be tight but it should stretch enough to slide over your boobs. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to make a double crochet foundation chain. Grab your yarn, create a slip knot, and we're going to start with chaining three. From here, yarn over, insert your hook into the very first chain that you made, yarn over, pull up a loop. Next, yarn over and pull through one loop. You're just making one chain right there. Next, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So you have two double crochet here, and we're going to work into that chain one that we made. So yarn over, insert your hook into that chain one we just made, Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through one. That's a chain one. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. So now we have three double crochet. Let's do it again one more time. We're going to work into that chain. Yarn over, insert your hook into that chain one, pull up a loop. Chain one, pull through two, pull through two. As your foundation chain gets longer, you'll notice the stitches on the side forming. So let's do a few more of these. Yarn over, insert your hook into that chain, pull up a loop, chain one, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, insert your hook into that last chain, pull up a loop, chain one, pull through two, pull through two. Continue these steps until your foundation row is the length of your underbust measurement unstretched. But a very important thing that you need to know while making this foundation row is that it must be a multiple of eight in order for the following lace pattern to work. So I can provide you with a chart of multiples of eight so that you don't have to do anything but count your own stitches, but you have to pick one of these numbers for this pattern to work. For my size, I did 80 stitches total. I've just finished all 80 stitches of my foundation row, so this is what it looks like so far. For my under bust measurement, it was 30 inches, but my bust measurement was 35, so I need to be able to have my foundation row stretch to that largest point. So that's what I'm doing here with my tape measure, is making sure that this row stretches to my widest bust, me bust measurement. Oh my god. I told y'all I had a list. There's too many S's in that last freaking sentence I just said. Oh my god. Anyways, moving on, we are going to connect both ends of this foundation row together. So right now I'm just flattening it out, making sure it's not twisted up. And I know that this tail where we began is the bottom of that stitch. So I want to connect on the opposite side of that stitch. I'm not going to connect on the side where the tail is. So I brought both ends together and we began with a chain three. So I'm looking here and connecting my hook into that third chain and leaving a slip stitch. Now that both ends are connected, you'll notice there's this little slit right here, but that's okay, we're gonna fix that later. So make sure that nothing is twisted up at this point and we're gonna start the next row. So chain one, turn your work. From here, we're going to single crochet all the way around until we reach the very end and we know how to do that. So go ahead and single crochet into every stitch and you should be maintaining your multiples of eight. 
So go ahead and do that and now meet you towards the end to show you how to finish this row off. I'm at the end of my row with only three stitches left. Here on the last stitch, I'm going to stop before I connect because I want to make extra sure that nothing is twisted up because it happens. So once you have reassured your safety here, now you can slip stitch into the very first single crochet that we made. And don't forget that a uh, little slit will be closed later, so don't worry about it. I know it's weird. It's all part of the plan, I promise. So right now you should have a cute little spaghettio and not an infinity scarf. So moving on to our next row, chain one, turn your work. And we're gonna start off with a stacked double crochet and you should start in that first stitch where I slip stitched, but I couldn't get my hook in there. So I just moved over to the next stitch. Anyways, so I'm leaving one single crochet in that very first stitch and then going back into that front loop of that single crochet and leaving another single crochet and that is a stacked double crochet. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that, repeat. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that. Chain one, skip one, double crochet. Repeat this all the way around until you reach the very end. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the footage for the rest of this row, but I will meet you towards the end to show you how to finish this off. I'm towards the end of my row, and right now I'm leaving my last double crochet. Next, chain one. We're going to connect at the top of this uh, stacked double crochet. And we'll connect using a slip stitch. Our next row is going to be double crochets only. So chain one, turn your work. We're going to start with a stacked double crochet into that very same stitch we slip stitched in. So leave your single crochet, reinsert your hook into that stitch and leave another single crochet. From here, double crochet into every chain space and double crochet from the previous row until you reach the very end. Your stitch count should be consistent, so I should still have 80 stitches by the end of this row. I'm at the end of my row here, and I just wanted to make sure you guys know to leave your very last double crochet in this uh, last chain space here. After that, we can connect to the top of our stacked double crochet with a slip stitch. So that completes our fourth row. So here is what our work is looking like so far. Our next row is just a bunch of chains. So chain one, turn your work, leave one single crochet into that very first stitch where you slip stitched. Next, we are going to chain five. Skip the next three stitches. So one, two, three, and then single crochet into this fourth stitch. Chain five again, skip the next three stitches, and then single crochet into the fourth stitch. Repeat this all the way around until you reach the very end. I'm towards the end of my row and I only have three stitches left, so I'm going to leave my last chain five. Skipping over those three stitches, I'm going to slip stitch into that very first single crochet that we made on this row. That completes row five. Here's what our work is looking like so far. Now our next row is what I like to consider open shell stitches, so I'll show you how to get started with that. Chain one, turn your work. And we're going to slip stitch into the first two chains of this chain five. So there's one, there's two, and in this third chain, we're going to leave a single crochet. From here, we're going to reach all the way over to our next chain five and leave three double crochet stitches. So there's one, two, and three. Next, chain two, and then leave three more double crochet. So there's one, two, and three. Next, reach over to the next chain five and leave a single crochet. 
Repeat this process again, reaching over to the next chain five, leave three double crochet, chain two, and then three more double crochet all into that same chain five space. Reach over to the next chain five space and leave a single crochet. So now you can kind of see these open shell stitches that we are forming here. And you're just going to repeat this all the way around until you reach the very end. I'm going to go ahead and speed up the footage for the rest of this row, but I'll meet you towards the end to show you how to finish it off. I'm at the end of my row here and I'm just leaving my last open shell stitch. So now to connect, we're going to insert our hook into that single crochet in that first chain five and leave a slip stitch. That completes row six. Our lace design is starting to come together and this should still be nice and stretchy. So moving on to row seven, chain one, turn your work over and we're going to slip stitch into these first three double crochet of our shell stitch. So there's one, two, and three. In this chain two space, we're going to leave one single crochet. And from here, we're going to chain seven very loosely. You do not want to chain tightly right here. Next, reach all the way over to the next open shell stitch and single crochet into that chain two space. Chain seven again. Remember to chain loosely and repeat. Reaching over to the next open shell stitch, single crochet into the chain two space. Repeat this all the way around until you reach the end and I'll show you how to finish this row off. I'm at the end of my row and I have to leave my last chain seven before connecting to the very beginning. So I'm doing that. And finally, going back to the first single crochet we left, I'm going to slip stitch right into that. And that completes row seven. From here, our pattern begins to repeat. So our next row is just double crochets only. So chain one, turn your work. And we're going to start with a stacked double crochet into that same stitch that we slip stitched into. So we should have the hang of this by now. Next, double crochet into every chain. So you're going to leave seven double crochets along this chain. And I do advise you to leave your double crochets into the chains themselves and not just like under that chain. Yeah, y'all get it. Also, all this cat fur can just go to hell. I moved back in with my mom and she has two Maine Coon cats that are like 20 plus pounds and the amount of fur they shed is fucking insane. I love those cats, but damn. Anyways, that's my vent for the day. After you've left all seven double crochet on your chain, continue uh, double crocheting into that single crochet on top of that open shell stitch and then repeat all the way around until you reach the end. I'm towards the end of my row here, leaving my last double crochet in this chain space. And then I'm going to connect with a slip stitch at the top of this stacked double crochet. And that completes row eight. Our next row is going to be these double crochet and chain spaces like we did on row three. So this is just a repeat of row three. Everything is the exact same. So chain one, start with a stacked double crochet into that very first stitch. Chain one, skip the next stitch, double crochet into the stitch after that. Chain one, skip, double crochet, repeat, all the way around until you reach the end. Right now I'm leaving my last double crochet on this row and I have one stitch left. So we're going to chain one and slip stitch into this stacked double crochet to finish our row off. That completes row nine, or is this eight? Our next row is a repeat of row four, so it's just double crochets only. So chain one, turn your work, starting with a stacked double crochet.
and then double crochet into every chain and stitch from the previous row all the way around until you reach the end and once again just as a reminder your stitch count should remain consistent so i should still have 80 stitches by the end of this row i'm at the end of my row and i'm leaving my last double crochet into this chain space and then slip stitching at the top of this stacked double crochet from the beginning of the row That completes row 10. Our next row is just chains and it's a repeat of row five. So leave one single crochet into that very first stitch, chain five, skip the next three stitches and single crochet into the fourth stitch, repeat, chain five again, skip the next three stitches, single crochet into that fourth stitch. I'll meet you towards the end to show you how to finish this row off. I'm at the end with three stitches left and I'm going to leave my last chain five, skipping over those three stitches and slip stitching into that very first single crochet that we made on this row. We have one more row left to do for our torso section and it's these open shell stitches but they're going to be a little bit different because it's our last row. So just like normal, chain one and turn your work. We're going to slip stitch into the first two chains of this chain five and then single crochet into this third chain. Reach all the way over to the next chain five space and we're now going to leave four double crochet into this chain five space. Next, we're going to make a pico stitch, so chain three and then slip stitch into the top of this double crochet that you left here and then double crochet four more times into that same chain five space reach over to the next chain five space and leave one single crochet and here you can see our new open shell stitch with a pico. So let's do this one more time. Reach over to the next chain five space and leave four double crochet. Chain three, slip stitch into that double crochet. Double crochet four more times again. single crochet into the next chain five space. Repeat this all the way around until you reach the end and I'll show you how to finish this off. Once you've left your very last pico shell stitch, you're going to slip stitch into the single crochet you left into that very first chain five. And pull up a loop long enough to weave in later and then cut your work. You're done with the torso. Well, kind of, you still have to weave in the tail and you should try this on. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that now. This is probably going to be a little bit tight, but it's supposed to. So try it on right now. You might have to go on one shoulder at a time or not, as long as it can go over your bust. Make sure it fits. Yay. One more thing before we get started on the bust section, since our yarn is already detached from the project, we're gonna use our yarn to grab a measurement. And what you're going to do is make a chain and see how many chains it takes from the bottom of your bust to the top where you want it to stop, the highest point. For me, with this loops and thread yarn, I always end up with 22 chains for my measurement but you're not gonna use this chain for anything. You're just grabbing a measurement to use for later and I'll show you in a minute, but get that measurement just to see how long that is and then unravel it and we'll get started with the next step. So just remember this measurement, okay? We're about to begin working on the upper half of our top by connecting our yarn right here where this tail is and closing that stitch. And then we're going to add a ribbing that wraps all the way around the back and the bust section. And this is where our stitch markers are going to come in hand. So we're gonna mark off where the sides, center, and other uh, center points are on the top. So 
We'll get to that in just a moment. Right now I'm going to connect my yarn using the magic knot method. Um, I don't really know how to explain this any better than just demonstrating it. So you can connect your yarn however you want to. I just like to avoid having many tails to weave in later at the end of this project. Once I've reattached my yarn, I'm going to insert my hook lower in this stitch so that I can just make this a little bit tighter. I'm going to pull my yarn through completely, and then I'm going to slip stitch um, the ends of these rows together so that it's closed. Chain one, turn your work, and now I'm going to begin single crocheting into every stitch all along the top of this, um, just all the way around. and. Making sure you have the same amount of stitches as you had before. So mine was 80, so I should still have 80 single crochet by the time I'm done with this row. Um, after we do this row of single crochet, we are going to then place our stitch markers where they need to be. So make sure everything is correct and good to go. Once you have single crocheted all the way around, slip stitch into that very first single crochet that you made to finish this row off. And now we have a really solid looking row for us to work on for the ribbing section. So go ahead and grab your stitch markers and let's get started. So since this area where we slip stitch is going to be the direct center of our back, we need to find the center of our front. So I'm going to take the number of stitches I have, which was 80, and divide it by 2. Therefore I get 40. So I'm going to begin counting 40 stitches away to find my front center and I'm going to leave one of my yellow stitch markers there. After you've marked off your front center stitch, you can see now how they align. So I have 40 stitches on one side and 40 stitches on the other. So next we need to find our side. So we're going to take that last number and divide that by two and I get 20 stitches. So I'm going to count 20 stitches away to the left and leave another yellow stitch marker there. Going back to the center, I'm going to count 20 stitches to the right and then leave a stitch marker there. So between all yellow uh, stitch markers, I have 20 stitches. So 20 on this side, 20 on this side. With our last two stitch markers in another color, we need to find the center stitch between both of these sides. So half of 20 is 10, so I'm just counting 10 stitches away and marking off my center stitch there, and then doing the same on the opposite side. So with my stitch markers being in place, I have nine stitches between both of these markers. 10 stitches if you're including the ones on the ends. So whatever your math ends up being, everything is just half, half, half. Earlier, I mentioned that you needed to make a chain that went from the bottom of your bust to the highest point that you wanted it to stop. Mine came out to 22 chains, so these two stitch markers are going to be the highest points of our bust, or whatever yours ended up being. So from there, since this is going to be our highest point, we're going to be increasing from this yellow stitch marker all the way up till we reach this. So I'm going to count down from 22 until I reach that yellow stitch marker. So 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12. So 12 stitches is how tall the ribbing will be all along the back of my top. So that is how I'm going to get started with the ribbing that uh, we begin in this very center of the back. So once you know what your numbers are based on your measurements, reinsert your hook from where we last left off and I'm going to chain up 12 plus one. So chain up the same numbers that you measured for yourself plus one. Now that I have 13 chains, I'm going to turn my work and begin single crocheting into every chain all the way down until I reach the end. So I should have 12 stitches total. Right now I'm leaving my very last single crochet into this last chain. So now I have 12 stitches. 
Now to end a row, we're going to slip stitch into the very next stitch. To begin a row, slip stitch one more time. To begin our next row, turn your work. Notice here that these last two braids are the slip stitches that you just left. So you slip stitch twice and we're going to be working into this single crochet. So don't work into either of these slip stitches. We're going to work into this single crochet and we're going to work into the back loop of it, leaving one single crochet and continue working into the back loop of every stitch all the way down, making sure that you have the same amount of stitches as you did for the first row. So I had 12 stitches, so I should still also have 12 stitches here. Continue this all the way down until you reach the end. I'm at the end of the row here, leaving my very last single crochet. And I'm just double checking to make sure I have all 12 stitches and I do. So just like normal, I'm going to chain one, turn my work and begin single crocheting into the back loop of every stitch all the way down, maintaining my stitch count and connecting at the very bottom. And I'll show you what that looks like. I'm towards the end of my row here, leaving my last single crochet into this back loop. Now to finish this row, I'm going to connect into the next stitch, not the stitch that we're currently coming out of, the next one over. And again, to begin another row, slip stitch again. So that's how you end and finish every row. I'll demonstrate one more time how to get this started. So once again, we are going to skip over these two braids in the very front. These two braids are the slip stitches that we just did, and we're going to work into the back loop of this single crochet. So that's how you identify the first single crochet of your row to get started. So I'm going to keep doing this um, back and forth for quite a few rows up until I reach my first yellow stitch marker. I've approached my first stitch marker and I still need to um, end this row and connect it down here. And I'm going to slip stitch again to begin the next row, but I know that the very next stitch marker is going to be um, the row that I come back down and connect later. So that row I'm going to begin doing half double crochets. So we're going to single crochet up and then do half double crochets down making sure we anchor into this stitch whenever we come back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my next row of single crochets in the back loop only, and I'll meet you towards the end to show you how to start off the next row with the half double crochets. I just finished my row of single crochets, so I'm ready to begin my half double crochet rows, and it's just like normal, you chain one, turn your work, this is also going to be our last row of 12 stitches or whatever stitch count you had um, because from here we're going to be increasing after this row. So yarn over, insert your hook into the back loop only, pull the loop, then pull through three and there's your half double crochets. So continue doing that in the back loop only all the way down until you reach the end. I'm at the end of my row here, leaving my last half double crochet, and I'm ready to connect to this row with a stitch marker. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove that, and then insert my slip stitch into that row. Now this next row to start, I'm going to slip stitch again. So from here, we're going to begin increasing on every row up until this uh, orange stitch marker or whatever color you have for your stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with my half double crochets in the back loop only all the way until I reach the last stitch. I'm towards the end of my row here with one stitch left. Here I'm going to leave two half double crochet for my increase, leaving me with 13 stitches total. 
Next, I'm going to begin with an increase so you can kind of see how that's starting to go upwards. So chain one, turn your work and start with two half double crochet in the very first stitch, making sure you're working in the back loop only. So there's one, there's two. Continue half double crocheting in the back loop only all the way down until you reach the end of this row. For this row, I should end up with 14 half double crochet total. Continue working each row and leaving your increases on one side of the ribbing all the way up until you reach your stitch marker. I'm about to begin my last increase row. So as you can see, as I work down this row, it's going to connect to this stitch marker, stitch. So this is going to be my very last increase row and it should have 22 stitches total. So I'm going to leave two half double crochet in the back loop of this first stitch and then half double crochet all the way down. Now that I've worked all the way down, I'm going to remove the stitch marker to connect this row and I'm going to demonstrate how to decrease so that we can have this uh, angling downward. So slip stitch to connect, another slip stitch to begin, and I'm going to go ahead and work the half double crochets all the way up this row until I have two stitches left. I'm at the end of my row here with three stitches left. I'm gonna go ahead and leave uh, one half double crochet here. And then with my last two stitches, I'm going to begin a half double crochet in that first loop, but not finish it. And then finish my half double crochet in that last loop, just like this. There's my decrease for that row. So now I'm back down to 21 stitches. Chain one, turn your work. Begin a decrease in the back loop only of these first two stitches. Continue working all of your rows and decreasing on one side of the ribbing only all the way up until you reach your next stitch marker. I've just finished decreasing and I'm back down to 12 stitches now and I have approached my stitch marker. So what I need to do now is remove the stitch marker and connect this row and I'm going to show you how to do the other half of this breast panel. So now that my stitch marker is removed, I'm going to slip stitch where that marker was and then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to slip stitch anymore. From here, I'm going to make a chain that matches the opposite side. So I ended with 12 stitches. So I'm going to chain up 12 plus one for my turning chain. Now that I have 13 chains, I'm going to begin half double crocheting into the second chain from the hook and then all the way down until I reach the end. Right now I'm leaving my last half double crochet and now I'm ready to connect. So going to the next stitch, slip stitching there and to begin the next row, slip stitch into the following stitch. So from here, everything is a repeat of the first breast panel. We're going to begin increasing until we reach our stitch marker. 
My highest point should be 22 stitches, so that's my goal for that center stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and do exactly the same steps that I did for the first panel and do this for this panel now. And I'll see y'all whenever you get to your last stitch marker. I've approached my last stitch marker and from here we're going to begin uh, resuming the same type of ribbing that we did on the first part of our back area with the single crochets in the back loop only. So I just removed my stitch marker and I'm going to go ahead and begin uh, connecting this row and doing those rows of 12 stitches only all the way until I reach the end. I've continued my ribbing all the way up to the last stitch and I'm ready to connect both of these panels together. So making sure that you have the inside turned out because this is going to leave a little bit of a seam. So now that I have this flipped the way that I want it to, this is going to be the inside of my work. And I'm going to begin connecting with a chain in the center. Since I have 12 stitches on both panels, I will be slip stitching into all 12 stitches um, on both sides of these panels all the way up. The first stitches are a little hard to locate just because it's like difficult to get your hook tucked all the way back there for this first slip stitch, but you made it this far, you can get through this. After you've left your last slip stitch, go ahead and chain one and pull up a long enough tail to weave in later. Cut your work and let's get ready to make some straps. Here's what our work looks like so far. She looks so cute. We can go ahead and turn her inside out, tucking that seam away for nobody to see. We're going to start with the back straps and uh, my center seam is just a little bit off to the left. So I'm going to count this other seam as my center stitch and I'm going to move over four, uh, I guess, ribbings over. And that's where I'm going to leave my first strap. So I'm going to attach my yarn, tie on a knot to secure it. Reinserting my hook into that stitch, pulling a loop through and then chaining up 70. After I've made 70 chains, I'm going to pull a chain and cut my work. And then I'm going to tie off the ends with knots and cut off any excess tail. Going back to the center of my spine, I'm going to count four of these ribbing rows over and then leave another strap of 70, just like I did on the other side. Here's what both of my back straps look like now. So I'm going to flip this over and we're going to add the straps to the front. Right now I'm just looking for the highest point of my bust section and inserting my hook there. And I'm going to pull my yarn through completely and tie a knot just like we did on the back. And for these front straps I'm only going to chain 60. So that's what I'm going to do for both sides and I'll meet you back once that's done. 
Once you have all four shoulder straps completed, uh, you're gonna make an individual strap of 100 chains, and you can use this one of two ways. So I'm gonna demonstrate the first way that you can use this. And you're just going to insert it into the corners of the slit in the front. This creates a really cute keyhole-like look. So I pulled my yarn through the back of the stitches. Once I know both straps are even, I make a little bow in the front. And so this is option one. If you want a really cute cinched bust look, then this is the second option. So I just insert this strap at the bottom of the slit coming in from the back side on both sides. Next, I make sure both sides of the strap are even, and then I begin working on the right side, weaving this strap in and out of every two stitches. So up through the top, up through the back, back through the top, every two stitches all the way until I reach the end. I was obviously struggling with this part because I have these long nails on, so I would advise you to use a hook if you have nails like me. So I just got one side done. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. After you've completed threading your strap through the bust, you can go ahead and cinch it closed and tie a cute little bow. Here's what she looks like all tied up and finished. We do have to weave these tails in, but I'm gonna do that off camera. Um, and real quick, we do also need to tie our bows on the shoulders. So try your best to make sure both of your straps are as even as they can possibly be because if one strap is longer than the other, you can definitely feel it and sometimes see it. So it's really hard to adjust it whenever you're wearing it. You might have to take it off and tie your bows and put it back on, but do whatever you have to to get the right fit. And that concludes our tutorial for today. I really hope you guys enjoyed this and I cannot wait to see what y'all made. Please make sure you tag me on any posts that you share on social media because I want to see it and I want to share it too. So thank you guys for watching. I love you. If you want to participate in any of the polls in the future for naming and top, then follow me on Instagram. And once again, here are all of my handles. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you. Have a great day. Goodbye.